All right, in this video, we'll be looking at Unit 4 on cellular communication and the cell cycle. Um, cellular communication is important for all living things, particularly multicellular things, because cells need to talk to each other in order to do the things that they're supposed to do. But this also happens in unicellular organisms as they talk to one another. And so cell communication, again, very simple concept, cells speaking to each other through chemical means, typically. Uh, this can be uh, directly, this can be over a short distance, like a regional sort of thing, or it can be over long distances. And again, you normally think of this in the context of a multicellular organism. However, unicellular organisms, say like bacteria, are also able to talk to one another and respond to cellular signals from the group, which can cause different things to occur. I think we'll talk about that later in this unit. Um, so chemical signals can be sent to adjacent cells. Chemical signals can be sent through long distances as well. So a couple of examples of adjacent cells. Here's just some cells that have connected to one another through gap junctions. This is just a, a way for animal cells to exchange things. Plant cells also, they have these little pathways between adjacent cell walls called, called plasma desmata, and these plasma desmata can exchange really small um, materials that are able to pass through a cell membrane or through, yeah, through the cell membranes and then obviously through the cell wall passages there as well. Another example of this is in the immune system. Um, cells will, oh, this is two unicellular organisms talking to one another, two yeast talking to each other. And so this will, how they communicate with one another when they're getting to, ready to sexually reproduce. Um, and another example of direct cell contact would be in the immune system. Um, so in our immune system, you're, you have these um, antigen presenting cells, usually a macrophage or something like that, that is, uh, that eats something a bacteria, virus, something along those lines, and then it will present a portion of that to another cell called a helper T cell. That helper T cell will say, okay, that's it. That's the thing that's getting us. I'm going to go and get the immune system ready. And so then it will go over here and talk to the B cells and the B cells. Okay. This is the thing that is attacking us. We need to make special provision for that. And then the B cells upon receiving this information will go out and make antibodies in order to respond to that thing. And so this is all direct contact. See, these cells are actually making contact with one another um, person to, or cell to cell. And so that is a way that cells can communicate with one another. There's also a sh a distance communication. This could be short distance or long distance. And so this is an important thing. Still using chemicals, uh, usually a chemical like a hormone or something along that line and in this sort of situation you always have a cell called a target cell the target cell is able to receive that specific signal notice on this target cell you've got some little v's and some little circles here and the little v's only recognize this purple thing that is being sent out by this cell this cell is attempting to communicate with these cells and so it sends out this hormone this purple message and these target cells have the thing that can receive it. It can't receive it on this round. That is a totally different signal or whatever this thing is right here. And notice this cell has no idea what purple thing means because it doesn't have the right receptors. And so only the cells that have the appropriate receptors will be able to receive that response. This can happen in a short distance. So sometimes you'll see this called uh, local or regional. Uh, this would be like me communicating with my classroom. Uh, it's a very, it's a local setting. Only people in my classroom are hearing it. Uh, they are receiving, all receiving the signal. And so a cell can release chemical messengers and then the surrounding cells will receive that information and respond accordingly. A great example of this would be like an inflammatory response. Um, an inflammatory response being, so you, let's say you step on a nail and the, there's some damaged tissues and those damaged uh, cells are going to say, hey, we stepped on something and there may be some things in us that shouldn't be there. And so all the surrounding cells are going to receive that message and they're going to respond accordingly by initiating the inflammatory response. It's going to cause that area to swell up. It's going to cause increased blood flow to that area. The macrophages are going to come in and start eating things up that shouldn't be there. But that's not happening in your hands unless you have like an allergy or something like that, which is this whole other thing. But it's only happening in that local area that you stepped on the nail. And so another example of this is neurotransmitters. I actually have a special slide for that. And so 
neurotransmitter. Here's a, a neuron that is sending out a message, and the message in neurons is electric, uh, electrical until it gets to the end of the neuron, and then it, and rather than shocking this cell over here, it communicates by sending a chemical messenger, and it does this in the form of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitter is a chemical signal that that nerves talking to nerves essentially, and it releases that neurotransmitter into the space, and the oh, the cell over here receives that information and responds accordingly. And so this would be a local type of signal, a short distance sort of signal rather than a long distance signal. There are long distance signals, however. And typically with long distance types of communication, it is one type of cell speaking to another type of cell. So you have an endocrine cell speaking to uh, whatever the target cell is, and it will typically use the bloodstream in order to do this kind of communication. I'll use an example. So in your thyroid, oh, well, there's another gland that's there called the parathyroid, and it releases a hormone called PTX. And PTX is a hormone that causes bones to either take up or release calcium, depending on the message from the brain. The brain says, we need more calcium. The parathyroid says, okay, I know what to do. And it releases that hormone into the blood. And the bones receive that information. No other cells know how to do that. No other cells are storing calcium. But bones do, and they receive that message, and then they will release excess calcium into the bloodstream in order to increase calcium levels. The brain receives that and says, oh, there's calcium in the blood. Now you can turn it off. The thyroid turns it off. That's a feedback mechanism, which we will talk about in a later uh, video. But that's the essentially uh, one cell communi is communicating with another type of cell. That type of cell has a signal or has a receptor and is able to receive that signal.